I was gonna try to simulate being tall, but that didn't really work so well, so we'll just do it from here. But we are gonna talk about electric bikes for tall people, and let's get into it. Recently, we made videos with recommendations for short riders as well as heavy riders, and I figured it's only fair to make a video about tall riders as well. It's definitely something that comes up a lot and I hope that I can provide some helpful suggestions. Now probably the first thing that comes up when people are looking for an electric bike and they're taller and they say, well, will it fit me? And how do you make that determination? Is it just that I need a double XL frame size or an XL frame size or there's a fly coming around here? I, we don't have electric bikes to fit them. That was pretty cheesy, okay. So one of the more common questions people ask is, will it fit me? Now there's a lot of different details to consider if you're a taller rider and you're looking to get an electric bike for yourself. First is really, is it gonna fit me? And if it does fit you, how is it gonna handle? What's the experience gonna be on it? Is it actually made to be able to accommodate a larger rider? Just because you can actually ride it doesn't mean that you're necessarily gonna be comfortable on it. And there's a lot of different factors that come into play there. Probably one of the more important ones is the frame size, but it's not necessarily the most important one because sometimes there's bikes that have just one frame size and they can fit a variety of different riders. And that's not necessarily a bad way to go if they're made to be flexible in that way. But before we get into that, I should probably just mention what is actually a tall rider. What would I actually consider a tall rider? Now I'm five foot nine, I have a 30 and a half inch inseam and I'm not sure if I would consider myself average height but I guess somewhere kind of around there. I'd say if I was thinking of what is a tall rider it would be somebody outside of maybe more common sizes we encounter and probably above six three or so. You know, certainly somebody can be considered tall if they're over six foot, or at least here in the US. I mean, other places in the world, there's people that are more commonly tall. I went to the Netherlands and there's a lot of really tall people. And actually a lot of the bikes that come from there tend to be a bit larger. Generally speaking, I would choose a size medium, but some bikes can tend to be a bit larger. Some bikes can tend to be a bit smaller and it really depends on what you're looking for, what type of experience you're looking for. Sometimes having a smaller bike could mean that it's a bit lighter, could potentially be a bit more maneuverable. But if you're going for longer rides, you might prefer a larger bike, just kind of allow you to stretch out a bit more on it, have some more room. I'd like to talk about what we've seen in the past as far as frame sizes, what we're kind of seeing now, and probably what we'll see more of in the future. If you think about it, the electric bike market, it's still a growing market and it's still relatively young. Now, when I first started in this about 10 years ago, most bikes came in just one size and many manufacturers, that's still the case. But as the market grows and as a lot of manufacturers work in more mature markets, they're able to have more variety and more options to satisfy the needs of their consumers. So we see with a lot more developed bike brands that they have more frame sizes. Maybe some of the smaller companies, they can't really afford to offer as much variety. Because if you think about it, when it comes to manufacturing, manufacturing that additional frame, it creates more complexity and costs more money and that sort of thing. So if you're in this very small subset of rider heights, it might be difficult for that manufacturer to create something and for it to be profitable. So for a lot of these companies where they used to just have one size, then many of them switch to having two sizes. More recently, we see some manufacturers go to four, potentially even five frame sizes. That's generally more complete. You know, you can go everywhere from like an extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. Some even have like a double XL. But not all sizes are created equal. Manufacturers use different measurements to determine what the size of their bike is. But one of the most common measurements is what's called the seat tube. And that's basically the measurement from the center of the crank arm up to the top of the seat tube where the seat post inserts. So this is one of the more common measurements. So if you see a frame that says 18 inches or 20 inches or 50 centimeters or 55 centimeters, generally it's going to be going by that measurement. But there's different measurements that are also important, especially if you're taller. Another measurement that's really important is the top tube length, the, the length of the seat tube to basically where the handlebar stem goes or the headset. And the top tube measurement is the top part of the front triangle of the bike. Then you also have a down tube, but the top tube is gonna impact your reach, like how much space you have between you and the handlebars. Now, if you're a taller person and you have a very short top tube, 
you're kind of in a weird, like scrunched up sort of position. You also might tend to be further back on the bike to try and give yourself room. That can create a kind of uncomfortable and unbalanced position. In an ideal world, you're as balanced in between the front and rear axle as possible, and that's gonna really create balance on the bike. You might have had the experience of riding a bike and you're back a little bit too far and you feel like there's not too much weight on that front wheel. You could feel this tendency to wanna like lift up that front wheel, that sort of thing. And maybe if you're riding on a flat surface, it's not as big of a deal, but as you start going up a hill, it becomes a much bigger deal because then you feel like you have to push your weight forward too much or that sort of thing. And you're constantly trying to rebalance yourself as opposed to just being able to feel comfortable, just like fixed in that position. And that's really where the frame size comes into play in a big way. I mean, there's different ways you can modify a bike. Like for example, you can put a seat post, a longer seat post, or potentially even a seat post that is set back a little bit. But thinking about it is, you know, the closer you get to that rear axle, the more potential for you to be a little bit more unbalanced. But if you're too far forward, that can also create a bit of a weird experience riding the bike. You're putting too much weight on the front wheel. It's not gonna be as easy to steer or handle. And you're not gonna get as much traction on that rear wheel because you're not putting too much weight there. I don't wanna overcomplicate things, but these are important things to think about and to consider. Now you can get to know this just by riding the bike and seeing how it feels. But that can also be a challenge because oftentimes bike shops have demo bikes or bikes available for testing in more of the medium and large size. To have those larger sizes available for testing, you're gonna have a, a much smaller clientele that's interested in that. And it could be difficult to support that and to have those bikes available. So oftentimes you need to be thinking differently and consider different details and actually consider what the ideal measurements are for you. and you know, take certain measurements on your own. One of the things that we generally ask people for is their height and their inseam. The inseam is not your pant leg inseam, it's actually the measurement from your crotch to the floor without shoes. This is a really helpful determinant of what is the ideal frame size for you. Now there's certainly other factors to consider and as you get into more advanced bike fitting, you'll wanna consider some of these other details like, you know, your torso length, your arm length, different things like that. But in a general way, you can get pretty close to where you wanna be with an electric bike with those two measurements. With that inseam measurement, you can consider what the standover height needs to be, for example. Now, as somebody with a slightly shorter inseam at 30 and a half inches, I find that a lot of bikes might have a slightly taller standover height and it can be a challenge at times. In an ideal world, you have an inch or two of clearance uh, between your crotch and the top tube just to protect yourself in the case that you have to hop off the saddle quickly. Now more and more there's bikes that have a, a low step that doesn't have that top tube, it's less of a concern. So, you know, the standover height's not really a thing there. But if you can find a bike that has a taller top tube, you still have enough clearance. And actually in an ideal world, you have that top tube go up relatively high and you can have a larger bike that fits you. Because if you think about it, that top tube, the down tube, and then the seat tube, that makes a triangle. So all these things are impacted. If you extend one of them, it's gonna impact the other measurements as well. And that's just how it's going to work. Now, not all manufacturers are equal in the way that they handle their sizing. Just because you're a 55 centimeter or a 58 centimeter in one frame manufacturer, you're not necessarily gonna be the same in others. I think considering that detail as well as the top tube and potentially the wheel size is gonna be another factor. Now you might be inclined to wanna opt for the largest possible frame out there, but actually if you're gonna also include a suspension seat post, you might be adding another three or four inches with that suspension seat post because it's not gonna go down all the way. Or in the case of a dropper seat post, you can go up to 170 millimeters. I'm not sure the exact calculation of that, but it's, I think four inches or so. To have that ability to drop the seat post down, you can consider some different frame sizes. Now, as I mentioned, that top tube length, that's gonna be really important and to give you that ability to kind of stay in between the wheels. 
Now certainly you could, if you need some more room and to stretch out a little bit, you can put a longer stem on it. And a lot of times people want to sit more upright. Now one thing with a taller rider, you tend to have a higher center of gravity, and that's another factor. So trying to be lower, have your lower center of gravity, you're gonna feel more comfortable, more planted on the bike. Now naturally, people that are taller, they might also be heavier, so considering the weight rating of the frame and the bike overall is an important detail as well. So many of the bikes that we offer, they tend to be a little bit more robust and can handle a bit more weight. Wheel size is another important consideration, but it's not necessarily a rule that just because you're taller, you need to have a larger wheel size. For example, we work with some manufacturers and they have a smaller wheel size, like Turn, for example. They make a folding bike and they make a cargo bike. Cargo bikes can be a really good way to go because they have a longer wheelbase and it's gonna be easier for a taller rider to stay in between the wheels. That's a good thing to consider. More specifically, the long or mid-tail bikes. They can also generally handle a bit more weight, so that's another thing to think about. You have 20-inch wheels. Some bikes have 24-inch wheels, 26-inch wheels. Many of the bikes that we offer have 27.5-inch wheels. This is a common size that's used for mountain bikes and they're also common to have a wider tire on there. From my perspective, that's a good way to go. It's gonna give you a little bit more support. It's gonna support your weight better. And if the bike can be appropriately sized for you, that's a great consideration as well. Beyond the 27.5, the 28 inch or 29er wheel, which is the, pretty much the same thing, also called a 700C, depending on the application that it's used for, is another consideration. One of the larger wheel sizes you'll find in more traditional bikes and electric bikes. However, there is one other wheel size that's not actually so common, but it's a possibility if you're particularly tall, a 36 inch wheel. So I actually know a gentleman, his name is David, and he has a company called Dirty Sixer, and he makes 36 inch wheeled bikes. It's pretty wild. Historically, he hasn't made too many electric bikes, but in speaking with him, I think that there's a possibility you might be seeing something pretty soon there. And traditionally, those wheels have been used for unicycles, but he actually uses them for bicycles specifically made for taller riders. And from his side, his clientele generally starts in the 6'6 six, six range and goes up to, I think 7'4 was one of his tallest customers. Shaq is one of his most famous customers and he's about seven feet tall. He's also a really just big guy overall and you know, he built a bike that can handle him. Now certainly there's ways you can modify any bike and you could pretty much fit anybody on any bike. You know, I could put a 6'6 six, six rider on a medium sized bike with a super long seat post and a super long stem. And they could say, oh, well, I feel relatively comfortable. The bike's not really that stable, but you know, just think about that. Uh, you know, I would say if you have an opportunity to test a bike in person, definitely a good way to go. Or really just try to work with the professional that knows what they're talking about here. It has experience with this sort of thing and find a bike that's actually made to fit a taller rider as opposed to just trying to modify one to fit you. I think that's mostly what I wanted to talk about. I'm sure other people are gonna have other suggestions and I definitely recommend you leave them in the comments if you can, because as you know, I'm not a tall guy. I, and you know, if you have personal experience, it's great. Or if you have personal experience fitting taller riders, I mean, I certainly have a decent bit of that. And we work with a variety of manufacturers that do offer some bikes for taller riders, but you know, nothing, beats, you know, just hearing from more people and just helping to make a more informed decision. I mean, that's part of the spirit of this YouTube channel. And we try to educate people and help them understand these things on a deeper level. To wrap things up, I'd like to just talk about a couple of the bikes that I'm specifically familiar with that would potentially fit a taller rider. But I'd say we start to teeter out somewhere in like the six, seven, six, eight. You can get a bike that's probably made to fit a rider up to 6'6", but going beyond that, you're likely gonna have to make some modifications like a different seat post, different handlebar stems, etc. But you wanna stay within a reasonable range and not go way beyond that because you probably could tend to put more pressure on that frame, more strain on the frame, than it might otherwise be built to handle. And as I mentioned before, you can create an experience where the bike is not as stable as it should be or as really intended to be. And you definitely wanna be careful about that. 
We work with the manufacturer Gazelle. They make a lot of bikes that tend to be larger. Some other manufacturers, Risa Muir, definitely a good one, and they have some pretty large frames. One of the bigger bikes is their Homage. They make it in a 58 centimeter, definitely tends to be pretty large. They also have a model called the Nevo, which they have in a really large size. And really actually most of their bikes, they tend to be a bit larger. One thing to consider if you are a bigger person, their full suspension bikes, they can be more challenging to accommodate a heavier rider. And outside of that, I mentioned, you know, cargo bikes. Uh, more specifically, their long and mid-tail bikes. Risa Mueller has a bike called the Multicharger and it has a longer wheelbase. Even though the frame size on their largest size is only 51 centimeters, you could tend to be a bit more comfortable on that bike because you end up really centered between those wheels and that's gonna be really helpful. Some other manufacturers that also have these kind of long and mid-tail bikes is like Turn, for example, as I mentioned before. Their GSD model, definitely a good consideration if you're taller. Actually, I know their PR guy is pretty tall and I've met him in person. I see him, you know, looks pretty comfortable on the bike. If you're riding in a more aggressive position, really leaning forward, the frame size becomes more critical. If you're riding like more sporty, if you're riding mountain biking or road racing, that sort of thing, it's a little bit different as far as sizing somebody on a bike like that, as opposed to somebody that you're sitting a bit more upright. If you're sitting more upright and your elbows are more kind of bent like this, longer top tube might just kind of push you forward a little bit. But if you're sitting in a more forward position, if you're kind of stretched out, if you have to bend your elbows too much, that's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable. It's gonna create like weird stress and pains and that sort of thing. It really depends on your ride position. Because we tend to focus on more urban riding and more comfort sort of stuff, people tend to wanna ride more upright and it's less of a deal. I think outside of that, you know, looking at some of the larger bike manufacturers can be helpful because a lot of times they will have more frame sizes available. Definitely something to consider there. I think that's mostly what I want to cover here. Hope you guys found it to be helpful. If I can provide any more insight or maybe you want me to do a follow-up video on this or one of these topics, I think we're probably going to end up doing a video on bike sizing overall and bike fitting. I have a good friend of mine that's a professional bike fitter. Just uh, hope you enjoyed and we'll see you soon.